Hi, this is Jan Karp from the Enamate development team. In this tutorial I'll be going through the new processing integration in Enamate. So the first thing you'll notice is that there's a new processing tab in Enamate. And if you don't have processing installed and set up in Enamate, you'll first be greeted with this uh, setup page. So the first thing you need to do is go to the processing web page and then download processing for your platform. Uh, I've already installed it, so now all I need to do is select the processing folder and after I navigate it to my install install folder I'm greeted with this uh, second setup page. Uh, in order to send messages uh, to the processing sketch, uh, Enamit needs the OSC library for processing. I've already gotten it from this web page, so from here. So then I can simply select this sketch folder, which is where the or you have to install the library. You can get to the sketch folder by checking it from the processing uh, preferences. So it's this folder right here. And now if I navigate to that folder, I now have the full full processing editor right here inside Enimate. Let's close the processing application. So now we can start writing a basic processing sketch. So the very first thing is to write the setup function. And here as the first thing we'll uh, set the size for the processing sketch. I'll go with 640 by 480. And the actual drawing uh, happens in the draw function. And here I'll first set the background to be 0. And we can actually test this right now, see that everything is running. So simply click the run button and yes, there's the blank processing sketch running. So now let's uh, let's make something with Enimate. So all of these uh, automatic variables are created by Enimate and these correspond to the different data that Enimate can, uh, can produce. So for example the full skeleton Full skeleton data uh, can be accessed through this skeleton array of p vectors. All the inv individual skeleton joints can be accessed by these names here. So let's, for example, draw all the skeleton joints. So I'll simply loop through the skeleton array. using the array's length parameter. And then let's draw, for example, circles for all the joints. Now, if I can't remember a certain syntax for a processing, processing function, I can simply either right-click on it and select the online help, or to simply, if the cursor is on the function, then I, I'll simply press F1 and I'll immediately get the get the documentation for that function. So now I see that the first parameters is the x coordinate and then the y and the width and height of the ellipse we're drawing. So now let's uh, let's first of all multiply the x coordinate with the width. And the current joint 
in the skeleton array and its x coordinate. And for the y coordinate, we'll use the y coordinate of the joint and let's say 10 pixels by 10 pixels. Now let's see what we have. And let's still check. Yes, we have the skeleton OSC enabled. So now let's run. And I can show you the live view here. And now we can already see the uh, ellipses here in the top left corner as the data is zero. So now once an amit starts tracking, we already see some motion, but the locations are not correct, as currently an amit has the full skeleton coordinates set to real world. But if I want them to map nicely to this processing sketch, I can simply select the screen mode for the coordinates. And now let's try again, and yay, now it's mapped correctly. Now in addition to the uh, tracking data, you can also get the live view feeds directly in the processing sketch. And uh, for that we can use uh, these uh, P images that I defined here. So let's draw an image and now uh, let's close the, this processing sketch for now. Uh, I'll again check the syntax. Okay, so first is the P image. So I'll set the first feed and then the X coordinate. I'll start from the top, le top left corner and simply draw it for the whole background. Let's see what we have now. So now the image is also transmitted to the processing sketch automatically. Now uh, the background is not showing as we have the alpha transmitted also. If I uncheck that, then we can also see the whole background or the whole data. Now one final thing that I want to show you is the exporting capability, which is uh, uh, available if you have full license for Animate. And uh, I think I'll go with the ghost view. It's pretty nice for this kind of stuff. So now we can export this into an application. And let's set the name, for example, Animate Tutorial. And then simply click Export. Now what this does is it uh, takes the current settings in Animate and stores them, st stores them with the sketch. And after the export is done, it opens up the correct location. So it's in the sketch folder, or subfolder, in there. And there we have the separate applications for the different platforms. I'm on 64 bits, so I'll go to there and then I can start the application straight from here. But before I start the application, I actually want to close Animate. Um, this is because uh, the exported application can automatically start Animate with the correct settings, no matter what settings were activate, active previously in Animate. So let's see how that works. First of all, the processing sketch starts, and now you should uh, shortly see Animate running in the background. Now if I go in front of the Kinect, then yay, there we have the processing sketch running in a separate application and starting Animate on its own. So now if I close the processing application, then Animate is also closed automatically. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And now go make some processing sketches with Animate. Thanks for watching. Bye.